This snippet is Creating a User Control. My name is Jeremy Osborne, presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft. In this snippet, you'll learn how to create and modify a user control in Expression Blend 3. Now, to get started, let's talk about what a user control is. User controls are generally created when there's a need for reusable content. For example, here in this project, we have a honeycomb object. We'd like to reproduce this honeycomb object numerous times in order to use it in our game. Now, it's possible to do this just by copying and duplicating objects. However, I'd like to show you some of the pitfalls of doing this. Within the Objects and Timeline panel, I'll go ahead and click on my Honeycomb object. Just as a reminder, if we go up to our Properties tab, we can see that this object is a canvas. In order to duplicate this canvas, I could always Control-C to copy, and then Control-V to paste. If we look within the Objects and Timeline panel, you can see that we created a copy. Now I can use that arrow key to push that canvas to over to the right. So far, so good. Now the problem is, is that these two objects are completely separate. So if I go ahead and modify one of them, the other one will stay the same. I'll go ahead and expand the original honeycomb object and then click on the hex shape nested canvas. And perhaps I'll go over here and I'll add an ellipse by clicking and dragging within that honeycomb. So the problem here is if I'd like to add this ellipse to all of my duplicated objects, I'm going to have to do it multiple times. This can be quite a hassle, and it's not very efficient. I'm going to go ahead and Control-Z to undo this, and let's talk about the benefit of doing this with a user control. However, first I'll also delete that honeycomb copy that I created by clicking on it and then pressing Delete. Now I'll go ahead and collapse my original honeycomb just to tidy up the screen, and then I'll right-click on it and choose Make into User Control. The Make into User Control window appears. I'll go ahead and rename this honeycomb and then press OK. Now, if you look carefully, you can see what happened within Blend. At the very top, we're within this document called honeycomb.xaml, so Blend created a unique document. We can see the editing view over here on the left-hand side. Now, let's go ahead and click on the tab mainpage.xaml to return to our main page. So a few things have happened here. If we look within the Objects and Timeline panel, we have a new icon where that canvas once existed. So this is the user control icon. It's still labeled Honeycomb. However, if we click on that object and we look within the Properties tab, we can see that that's now a user control. It's using the default name, which is no name. And generally speaking, that's not a good idea. Let's go ahead and rename this Honeycomb. And then press Return. Now, another thing is happening here. You'll notice that there is a border around this Honeycomb. And if we look carefully, there's an exclamation point. That's because it's technically a new element, and we need to refresh Blend in order to make use of it. In order to do that, I'm going to choose Project, Rebuild Project. Once we do that, we can see the exclamation point in the border disappear, and now we can make use of it. Go ahead and click on the Selection tool, place your cursor over that user control, and then let's go ahead and right-click and choose Copy, and then we can use Control-V to paste. If we look within the Objects and Timeline panel, we can see that we now have Honeycomb Copy. We can click and drag that to the right. We can also use our arrow keys. And let's go ahead and duplicate this in another way. I'm going to press and hold down my Alt key, and then click and drag to the right. And that also creates a duplicate. So now we're creating duplicates of that user control. Honeycomb, Honeycomb Copy, Honeycomb Copy 1. But now let's look at the benefits of these user controls. What I'm going to do now is edit the original user control by right-clicking and choose Edit Control. We dive back down into that honeycomb.xaml document. And now let's go ahead and add that ellipse the same way we did earlier by clicking on the Ellipse tool and then clicking and dragging to the right. We're going to remove this shortly, so I'm not going to worry too much about the placement. If I now click back on mainpage.xaml, we can see that all three instances have now been updated. Of course, we still get that exclamation point, so I'm going to choose Project, Rebuild Project. I'll click anywhere in the background in order to remove the selections. And here we can see the benefit of the user control. I went ahead and updated one of them, and all three changed. Now, we can also add user controls in another way. If we look on the left-hand side of our toolbar and click on the Assets, or the Asset Library, and then click on Project, Project contains all of the new elements that we created within Expression Blend. And here we have a user control named Honeycomb. Well, that's the one we created. I'll click on that, 
and then I'll click and drag within my artboard and that will actually add a new instance of that user control. So there's essentially a couple ways we can create these user controls. Again, at any given point, if you want to modify that user control, we can go ahead and right click it, choose Edit Control, and we can modify. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and remove that ellipse because I don't like the way it looks. Go back to mainpage.xaml, choose Rebuild, and we're in good shape. So again, in this snippet, you've had the chance to see some of the benefits of user controls. They're generally created when there's a need for reusable content. One thing that's also worth pointing out, although we won't be doing it within this snippet, if we go up to the Projects tab, we can see that the honeycomb.xaml page, if we expand it, also has a honeycomb.xaml.cs. This is a code behind file, and what this tells us is that we can add additional code to this user control so that it has independent functionality. User controls are great when you're sharing assets between projects as well as assets that include code. Thank you for now. This is Jeremy Osborne presenting from AGI Training for Microsoft.